Edie Lush, and I'm here at the Hub Culture Pavilion in the Maya Riviera. Very pleased to be joined now by Guillermo Ortiz. He's the chairman of the advisory board for Banorte, also the former Mexican Central Bank governor and minister of finance. Tell me your thoughts on financial inclusion, which is a large part uh, of the conference discussion this week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, um, I think that, that the, um, one of the main aspects of financial inclusion is that according to uh, the World Bank, <coughs> the progress has been, in terms of numbers of people who have access, mm -hmm. has been very impressive. Uh, in five years, about 10% of the world population has been incorporated into some form of financial inclusion. <coughs> the second point is that uh, <coughs> the main ingredients are uh, technology, education, and government policies. Mm -hmm. uh, this conference uh, at the forum focused mostly on technology and mobile technology and uh, different experiences uh, with mobile technology and the communications between the technology providers, banks, and so on and so forth. <laughs> but th there are two or three things that are important uh, in this subject. You know, one is that uh, there is no cookie cutter mm -hmm. recipe or approach. And uh, at Banorte, uh, uh, I was chairman of the bank for several years, and uh, we did um, an experiment with Mifon, which is a mobile device that worked very well in mm -hmm. some states within Mexico. Within more rural communities? Within more rural communities in, in Oaxaca, Chiapas, and so on. When we tried to replicate this model uh, in other parts mm -hmm. of the country, it didn't work. Mm -hmm. you know? So uh, that shows that even within one country, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. uh, and that has, uh, I think, an important bearing because um, uh, many people get carried away with the concept. Right. Yeah? And uh, not all financial inclusion is good. Sense, you know, financial inclusion is good uh, if it expands the productive opportunities for the people, uh, if it allows the poor to have intertemporal mm -hmm. choices, if it reduces transaction cost. But, uh, and I'll take the case of Mexico, but the same can be said in mm -hmm. India, mm -hmm. uh, where uh, microfinance companies, we have about a thousand of them in, in Mexico that uh, lend particularly to the informal sector, which is a, a large portion of the economy. And some of them uh, do a really good job. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have examples, for example, like Compartamos, you know, which is a, a success story. But others, uh, they, they have the impact or they have the effect of getting people more in debt and living beyond their means. And, uh, you know, living beyond their means and so on. So uh, <coughs> the problem is that we don't have a system of evaluation, not at the national level, uh, and there are no international standards either for... And you're talking for, about Mexico in general? Well, Mexico and, uh, and any, other, mm -hmm. any other... I don't know any, any country that, can, that actually has a, a system of evaluation. Mm -hmm. Of uh, which you know institutions are you know performing what they are supposed to be doing mm -hmm. and which are not. Mm -hmm. So I think that we urgently need some sort of evaluation, some form of, of of evaluation. Uh, the uh, thing is, you know, not to get uh, too much carried away with the concept. I think that financial inclusion is fundamental. Uh, but the good kind of financial inclusion. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this sense, you know, government policies play a very important role. Uh, and uh, and it, it should be a role that has two components. You know, one is to induce the formalization of the informal. And one of the incentives for formalization is access to cheaper credit. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is the formal financial institutions, the banks mm -hmm. particularly, that <laughs> given the appropriate uh, support and incentives of government policy can provide 
uh, cheap finance, mm -hmm. much cheaper finance, to the unbanked. Mm -hmm. uh, fortunately, we have uh, a growing body of uh, academic literature, both uh, at the uh, sort of uh, empirical level mm -hmm. and uh, looking at specific cases which uh, give, has given us much more uh, knowledge of uh, what is involved in, in terms of financial inclusion and how can we improve that. Coming back to my first to mm -hmm. my point, I think that the issue of evaluation is crucial. Okay, thank you so much for joining me here at the Hub Culture Pavilion in much. Riviera Maya, and I'm Edie Lush.